Uh, thank you for joining. Let's just get started. My name is Abdi. I'm from Monsoon Sim. And here with, here with us is Dr. Christine uh, from Deakin University. So my name is Christine Contesotto. I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Accounting uh, at Deakin University. I'm also the Associate Dean Teaching and Learning in our Faculty of Business and Law. And back when I started uh, teaching with Monsoon Sim, uh, this was absolutely new to me. I'd never used a simulation. I'd not played computer games. And I really was very dubious about the attributes of teaching this way. I'm now a complete convert. So what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about how we, uh, how we teach the unit in which the simulation is based, then talk about how we've introduced it and the, the way we use it, particularly around our assessment tasks and then to talk about the difficulties that we experienced or thought or the challenges that we had to deal with before using the task, and then the real positives that have come out of it. And then obviously happy to ask questions at the end. So we teach uh, or use Monsoon Sim as part of our capstone experience. So the capstone experience is designed to help students bring their knowledge together. When we teach accounting, we tend to very much focus in the other units on how to follow accounting standards. So how do you do accounting? Debits, credits, following accounting standards, preparing very soloed type of transactions. Yet when students go out into the real world, we know they actually have to bring all their information together. And accountants do spend a lot of their time doing financial statements, but they also spend a lot of the time providing information for management. And management really wants strategy and advice on how their strategies are working. So we really felt it was important to bring accounting into a working organisation, so to speak, so that they could see immediate impacts of decisions that they were making, both on the actions of the business and on the financial statements. So, for example, you know, if you're competing in teams against competitors selling the same products as you, you have some pricing strategies. So you can choose to set your price high you get a high gross margin per product, but then you would expect to sell less. As an alternative, on the other extreme, you can have very low margins, and set your price low and increase your quantity of sales. What is the better technique to enhance your profitability? And that's something we really wanted students to have to think about. And for, so for all the decisions that are made in a business, we wanted students to understand how the accountant can support that decision making and how the decisions can influence uh, financial um, statements, profitability, et cetera. So we really wanted students to, to action what they've learned in, in our whole course. So in our accounting course, it's part of our Bachelor of Commerce. So students have to take economics, law, finance, uh, data analytics, accounting, um, you know, as part of their course. So they have a broad range of commercial experience. We wanted to action all of their learning in that three year course. And then we want to, them to reflect on what they've learned and what they're actually doing. So we wanted to make it as authentic as possible. So to relate their discipline specific, their accounting knowledge to real activities. Now, of course, it's really hard to pick up your, you know, we would have two to 300 students a trimester. Really hard to pick them up and take them into an organisation, but really easy to give them that experience in a simulation like Monsoon Sim. So our other aim was to, to build a bridge between the final year of our undergraduate degree, employability, and lifelong learning. So we know from employers that we have uh, had focus groups with, they want students that can reflect, that look for information, that can problem solve, um, work as a team and communicate clearly. And to play Monsoon Sim well, to, to be a winner, the team's the winner, all those um, attributes have to be at play. And so our, our game really is derived to, to enhance students ability to use those graduate learning outcomes or, or soft skills or professional skills, however you'd like to call them. And so we really wanted to encourage the development of graduate capabilities that our employers were telling us they required um, from our students. So our capstone has three main components. So for the first three weeks, we really review accounting transactions and theory. So an overview of what they've done in the whole course from an accounting perspective. We then spend four weeks on the simulation 
And then we spend three weeks on case studies that we've had specifically developed for our students that have a strong focus on accounting, corporate governance, environmental issues, try and bring in sustainability, maybe some fraud issues. And we look at, uh, we take those cases from what's happening um, in the world. So we've had cases built around, um, you know, a business collapse in Australia, which was the Dick Smith Group. We've had something around Volkswagen and their experiences with their environmental um, fraud. Um, we've done doing a case on the Royal Commission that's happened in Australia. So trying to keep it very, very focused. And the simulation informs students of how different decisions being made play out in, in the cases as well. So it, the simulation leads very nicely into the cases because they've seen a holistic uh, picture. So what did we want from the simulation? We really wanted students to start thinking about not just accounting. Accounting is a tool used in business. We are not accountants, are not the be and end all of a business. We are a support. So what information should we be generating? How should we be generating it? What information should we provide to management? And so we really wanted them to understand the impact of various business strategic decisions on financial statements. We wanted them to understand there is a relationship between management accounting, financial accounting, but also on the decisions you make around human resources, procurement and marketing. So that it's just not accounting there on its own. It, it has this whole player impact. We wanted them to realize that in a business environment, you're not dealing with one issue at a time. There is a multitude of things happening in a business. And Abdi showed you the really small start when there's just retail stores. And as the game gets more complex, there are so many decisions and things happening that the team has to realize they're juggling a lot of decisions and they can't just play in one little accounting space. So it really does make them open their eyes up to what the world's like. It does, we did want them to learn to work effectively in a team. I'm sure many of us have had the same experience. We force group work for students in assessment tasks and we try and develop it in classes. There's often a, lot, a lack of engagement with students. They would prefer to do stuff on their own. They don't want to have to liaise. They don't want to have to assess um, their teammates' strengths and weaknesses. They'd rather just do it themselves. Um, and so we, we really wanted to force students to have to work on it in a team. And finally, we wanted them to start strategizing and problem solving. So, you know, my business is not making the right, as much profit as my competitor. What could I do differently to try and change that situation? So um, we really wanted them to have to draw on a lot of their, their skills. So how? So what do we do? We have students work in teams of five to run businesses that compete against each other. We start in the first week of running um, the game just to get them to learn. We throw students in the deep end, which was the recommended learning by Abdi when we, we started this. The students flounder for about three or four minutes, then they realise they've got to do something and they actually start doing something. And they play for a little while as solo agents because at the very early part of the simulation, you don't need teamwork. But in about 15 to 20 minutes, as we ramp up the complexity, these students start to work as a team very effectively. So each week we do a more complex configuration of the game and, and each week we make the game faster. So, um, and it goes incredibly fast when it's a 15 second day. What we felt was most important for our students learning was that we would provide regular breaks for team strategy meetings. So we actually run the game for however many days. We stop the game. We ask students, what information would you like? And they might say, we'd like to see what our retail sales are. So we would allow them to compare their sales with their competitors, the other team's uh, sales. Uh, they might not want to know their gross margin. They want to, might want to know how many stock outs they had. So we start sort of with encouraging them um, as to which reports might be useful for the stage of the game we're at. But by the week four, they're telling me, show me this, I need this information. We also made it competitive so that we would announce a winner every game. Uh, so the students had something to strive for 
And we also expected them to, to improve their, their performance every week of their business. We did have a new game start each week um, that we taught this because we felt it was really important that if a team bombed in one week, they had the opportunity to, to learn from that and to come back strongly the following week. Whereas if we'd kept the same game going, there's less incentive for them to come back in the following week. So we actually, in most of our classes, have nine teams competing against each other. So the difficulties that we um, have had to face and which we um, experienced and which we've learned to deal with was firstly, how to ensure the students realise the learning. So we weren't explicit enough with students initially in what they were learning. We could tell they were learning because we could see their performance enhancing. And in the assessment tasks, we could see real uh, reflection and strategizing. So we really had to encourage students around what they were learning. So we're now quite explicit at the beginning of each class. These are the modules. This is what you're taking from these modules. This is how you can, um, or, you know, what you're tying together in this process. After we've run the game, uh, we would have students, uh, so three teams per week, uh, would present on specific questions around their strategy, what worked for them, what didn't work for them, how they would change their team performance moving forward, and so that all teams could hear what others were doing. So we required them in the assessment tasks to reflect and to take initiatives to actually report back onto us that this didn't work and later we tried this and it did work. So that we wanted to see and for them to document for us how they progressed in their learning and their thinking about how to run this business. Um, and then at the end of the class, we started recapping. Hey, let's look at the key takeaways you've told us you've got. So the learning became really explicit. To help students realize the learning, the assessment tasks are really important. We've put a lot of thought into those and also discussing the learning. So actually bringing it to their attention. The other difficulty we had um, that um, our university or my university, and I think most Australian universities have rules around um, external marks, you know, assessment marks being held by external parties. So we had to create assessment that was outside of the monsoon sim game for marking, and so that it's recorded on our, on our own learning management system. There are, um, multiple choice quizzes built into the, the simulation. We've chosen not to use them because that's a form of marking. So that's not the path we went down. So our assessment, we created three different assessment tasks. Uh, the first one, sorry, I've gone out of that. The first one was a professional mark each week. So we run the game for four weeks. We said each week you come, you get two and a half marks per week. To be a professional person, it means you come to work on time. So you are there ready to start your simulation on time. It means that you're not on your phone because you're at work running your business. It means that when we have a break, that you're back from the break on a timely basis. It means that you're working on the game and you're working with your team members so that we're really rewarding them for working as a team. And so that's 10 marks of the 10% of the overall results. And that was really to, to enhance the professional skills and the students you know two two wrong moves and you're out so if you come to class and you haven't done the pre-reading and you're not prepared to play this game you've lost one and a half marks of your two and a half professionalism marks this week if you take a you know call on your phone you've got no marks you know so we're really in, in trying to emphasize that you need to be a professional when you're an accountant we have a group presentation. This happens, each group presents once. They get the questions a week in advance. The questions are particularly related to the new modules we introduce into the game. So that we, the students play the game. They have 10 minutes to prepare their presentation and then 10 minutes to present. So it's very action packed and requires them to be thinking about what they're doing as the game progresses. And then finally, after the we've done the four weeks, students are required to write a report, again, as a group, around their business performance and strategy. And we have different questions every trimester to ensure they don't um, get support from students who've done it in prior trimesters. And there's just so much in the game that we can query. So this trimester, 
I'm really focused around management accounting and you know direct costing versus absorption costing, so that they need to use the data in in the game. In other other trimesters, we focus perhaps on other things. So how did we feel? Really nervous. The first time we ran ran it, we were really nervous. We weren't sure what students would do. We were very nervous about how robust the software is. We we're unsure about what our CLAD students do. So in, the, in Deakin, we have pre-COVID-19, we had a lot of CLAD students who don't tend to come to class on time. So we were really worried about how they would act, being forced to come in and join a game at a specific time. And we really felt that we we're under pressure to capture students who arrived late and unprepared and get them functional fast. So we felt really nervous. I must say the support we were given um, from Abdi in particular, but was just brilliant. So we were never alone. Um, and if I, I send out a phone call or an email, I get a very prompt response. So what did we find? Students were incredibly competitive. I couldn't believe how quickly they got on board to actually um, play this simulation and try to win. They just weren't filling in time. They were very, very motivated. The team decision making was essential and they quickly, I've never seen it before, started communicating and working in their teams. So I've been a teacher for more years than I admit to now. I've never seen teamwork like I've seen it in this game and it becomes, the teams become very strong. And we forced them to stay in the same team for four weeks because they've got to write a report. And after that four weeks, when we move on to the case studies, they can go into different teams. It's incredibly rare for a team to break up. They become really committed. Uh, the professional assessment marks surely motivated the students to fully participate and the students thought it was great fun. You know, the feedback is always positive. Um, our cloud students came on board. From our perspective as lecturers, the first week of the game feels chaotic. So you just, you throw the students in, they're, they're learning, we're trying to help them. But it takes about, I don't know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and all of a sudden you're going, actually, this is working. By the time we get to week three and four, I might as well not be in the, in the room. The students just run this themselves. They ask for strategy breaks. If we want to cut it off too soon, they're asking for it to be extended to the time they want. So it's really positive and empowering for students. So we were very, very happy. Students worked well. Uh, we became, you know, just the person that started the game off for them really and showed them some, some graphs and stuff. They really ran it and, and led their learning. So we were surprised at how um, well students saw interact interrelationship between businesses and how hard they work to really improve their strategy. We've had great support. And what I found um, is that Monsoon Sim continually evolves. So every time we come to it, there's something new that we can explore. We don't always choose to use it in our, our classes, but we can mix it up we, um, every trimester uh, when we want to. Uh, the negatives, well, we had to spend some time to learn the simulation. I learned it four years ago now, so it's not a huge commitment for my time. I maybe spend two or three hours um, in the year when there's updates, um, but really now it's just built in knowledge for me. New teaching staff are really nervous about the game, but we've learned how to support them. And so we've got enough established people that can now do it. It's, we've got to establish the games for each class. Uh, I set up yesterday, uh, 16 games for 16 classes. Um, it took me about an hour. So again, it's not huge. We do need to make sure we're on top of the regular updates. Um, that's not hard. Uh, we do a webinar. Um, and so when we've got new teachers, we tend to have two teachers in the room for the first 30 to 45 minutes just as a support. Some feedback from the student. And, you know, obviously I've picked good feedback, but you know, I must say 99% of feedback from students is incredibly positive. I love the game. I learn a lot. I realize where I fit best into a team. I learned how to communicate kindly and under pressure. You know, I enjoyed the game. It was an interesting, actually think it should be used earlier in our degrees. Shows how financial information changes and how it affects business results. You know, it would be great. You know, it's a great opportunity to make the right decision and how your, you know, decision affects. The only negative feedback we've had is that some students tell us um, they, didn't, um, they didn't think they learned anything. And some students have said four weeks is too long. Um, we don't agree. We think we get four weeks worth of value. Um, just before I do the, um, my, the questions, just as an aside, away from our classes, 
We have also used this um, when we have students visit the university. So I have run this game with year nine students. So they're 15 years old, no business experience. They've run this game and really also understood you know, we, we've done it at the less complex end, but they've really understood and made some really good decisions. Uh, we also use it when we have open days to so, show students what a great university deacon is. And it always goes down really well. So I don't know how long I've taken, but hopefully not too long. So happy to answer any questions. Hey, so my name is Hossein Dr. I'm from, from Malaysia. Yep. I'm a senior lecturer here in uh, UUM. School of Technology Management and Logistics. Just, uh, I would like to ask regarding the activities and assessment, which is the most core cool part that you yes. just present now. Questions come to my mind that these on hours is uh, four weeks. Should so we, we spend four weeks and we have a three hour class in that four weeks, uh, each week. So we do this for 12 hours, but some of that time is spent on um presentation so in most weeks we would play the game for an hour and 45 minutes to two hours um, breaking it up for strategy breaks for example uh, and then we would have an hour of students preparing and then undertaking their presentations uh, thanks a lot thanks a lot to christina Uh, Christian, uh, this is Mohammed. I am from Melbourne. Hello. I have a question to you. You know, uh, how long it takes you to, you know, comprehend this game? Because we have to be an expert to teach or uh, to run these two students. No, you know, I, I, expert is a really strong word. Um, so the first time we we actually learnt the game, uh, we did it really comprehensively. And so Abdi came down and spent two days at our university with a number of us and we did different things. So the first day we just chose to play the game. So we really had an understanding of it from a user perspective. Uh, so that was fun. You know, it didn't feel like training. The second day we learned how to set the games up. And in all honesty, maybe that was four hours of solid work. Um, but we did it and we played games and we, we had a lot of fun and we supported each other. Now that, so that was my investment, I guess. Um, and so I became a certified trainer from, from that training. So now that, so that was the first time. The time, the other, when you set up the game the first time, it takes you uh, some time because you're learning where to find the different things you want to switch on and off. And you're looking at the different alternatives that you have. Now I'm really experienced in this. And I pretty much know what the key things I want to do are. So realistically, I would think if I spent three hours in the whole year learning, uh, you know, up, upskilling, um, that would be the max. So normally, each time there's an upgrade, Abdi would offer us a webinar. It normally goes for around an hour. He does some demos. Uh, we look and we ask questions. And then after that, we make an assessment about which parts we may or may not want to bring in to our classes. But it really is not a huge time commitment. It is much easier, much easier than it looks when you, you see it. And I can tell you, it's really robust. I was doing this, um, I was um, leading a game, running a game, and I made a mistake and I actually closed um, my browser and so closed down the game. Realised quickly, went straight back in and the game just started seamlessly. And the student said to me, oh, it seemed to stop for a second. I said, goodness, that's strange. And, and we just went on. It's incredibly robust and f incredibly forgiving. So um, I, I really would say, and I'm not, you know, I'm a lot older than a lot of people. I'm not used to playing computer games. I wouldn't say I was a computer whiz. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, back to Q&A. Any question? I have a question Christine, for Christine. Go ahead, Alfred. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, uh, Christine. Um, now, uh, you were you were talking about how 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 classes were delivered and all, and I, I'm particularly uh, interested in your insight into how uh, 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 because at at modules are delivered separately and individually, uh, focusing on uh, different topics. 
Uh, and, and I'm just wondering, uh, could you provide some insight into how uh, uh, games are being played uh, and, and at different time, uh, we focus on, on, on a different area. Like for example, early on, you mentioned accounting management, accounting and all. Uh, let's say in this yeah. case, um, we are focusing on uh, analytics. Uh, <laughs> right. So we, we actually don't go down the depth of analytics that um, Derek showed you. So we, we stop before that so that we, our assessments are more around um, accounting um, and strategy rather than a lot of data analytics. However, what we do each week is cumulatively build on the game. So the modules that we start in one week, um, we would have open for the next week and then we would build new, add more modules in. So that by the time we get to our fourth week, we're probably running you know, 90% of the modules. We're, how fast we move on though? Well, so we would start, we would open a module. Really the academic in the room makes a call when he or she feels the students have um, learned what we're hoping they will learn from that module. So some things come um, really, um, you know, some modules students pick up very fast. For example, forecasting, it's quite a simple module and students pick up on it very quickly. And so we might only spend uh, 10, 15 minutes having them play with that before we open up something else. When we start looking at manufacturing and you're buying machines and you've got maintenance, that takes longer for students um, to adapt and to work out um, how to operate and control that. So we're really quite responsive to what's happening in the room. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that, that means we, we you could stack you could stack your module up, and oh. as you progress along, right? Yes, and so in our fourth week, we normally have nearly every module open, and we just let them uh, play to try and find out who the winner is. You know, so we actually come up with an overall winner. Um, because we think at, at that point, they really should be pulling everything together. Okay, thanks. Uh, hello, uh, I would like to ask one question. Hello? Sure. Yeah, who would you like to speak to? Me, yes. Derek, Abdi, me. Okay. Both of you, I mean, uh, your uh, lectures is so uh, related to each other. Uh, first, we got how to the activities and assessments, and then how to use that analysis to measure that uh, activities and to measure the students' improvement. Oh, uh, we do it based on our metrics, so that we. Um, so, if you have a student group, for example, a team that goes bankrupt in week one, we would expect them to explain to us what went wrong and what they're going to do in the future. So if we have teams who go bankrupt two weeks in a row, then we say, you're not actually learning from what you're meant to be learning. You know, you're being cowboys and just clicking and, and playing without strategizing. So we really do look at their performance and ask them to justify within the class. Um, so informally to justify what they're doing and why they're doing it. So that you can have a student, you know, we can have a student's team that maybe does a, a B2B and doesn't uh, do the pricing well, and so their performance can fall in that area over, you know, between weeks. But we would expect that retail sales would keep improving because they should learn um, how to manage their inventory levels, <clears throat> how to ensure automatic transfers between the warehouse and, and the different stores. And so we would we look at those things, but it's quite informally in the classroom for those things. That's around sort of their level of professionalism. Um, and to encourage them to actually think rather than just click and play. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So it's it's fun as a lecturer because you're on your toes all the time as well. Okay, good. Uh, just one question. To the people, yeah, to the people in Australia. Uh, may I know how long have you been running uh, Monsoon Sim in the university, and then have uh, all have the students who played this uh, graduated, and then yeah. uh, and then uh, how? Uh, how they make use or, or how they benefited from uh, Monsoon Sim while applying for a job or while working? Um, it's difficult to, to tie that down. So we've been using it for four years. We started in 2017. We run it three trimesters a year. So we've had a number of opportunities to run this. Um, it's difficult to pull out just the simulation because we think our whole capstone experience is geared to assisting students when they go particularly for graduate in, graduate interviews 
when they've actually got to sit in a group. I mean, um, they often go and there's a group task assigned and they've got to work as, uh, as a team to come up with a solution. And the solution is obviously not always around an accounting issue. It's often around environmental or some issues where there's issue where the students won't have a, a standard answer. So it's difficult to pull out what the simulation does alone, but it does, you know, from what we understand from what we've spoken to students and also from recruiters, that our students um, seem to be able to work very well when they come to those group tasks. So I think part of it is from the game, from sharing and using um, the different skills within the team. But I think it also comes from our case study approach where we are, we really, um, encourage students through the nature of the task to drill down. What is the issue? You know, what are the alternatives? What alternative would you recommend? You know, um, what are the strengths in this case? What are the weaknesses? What led to this behavior? So I think it's the combination um, that helps our students, but we often get very positive feedback from employers saying that our students seem very well prepared for their interview processes. All right, cool. Thank you very much for that response. Okay, uh, any other um, questions? Um, if not, let me go back to my uh, slide and I am go just going to uh, close it. There's some contact here uh, for you guys. Uh, are you looking at, okay, so here are, the, here are the contact if you have some question that you'd like to uh, ask. Um, we have uh, in Australia, New Zealand, you can co uh, contact me directly at the at Monsoon Sim. Uh, in Singapore, Malaysia, you can contact Alex at monsoonsim.com. And in Philippines, uh, please contact Donald. All right. And they are here. Um, if, yeah, Donald at monsoonsim.com. All right. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, Christine, thank you so much for your time. It's